We're in another new chapter. This is chapter 6 about adding and subtracting fractions with unlike denominators. This is lesson 6.1. We're going to do addition with unlike denominators. We can use models to add fractions that have different denominators. Here we have 2 thirds plus 1 6. We use fraction strips to represent the equation. We have two one-third pieces and a one-sixth piece. And we place fraction strips that have the same denominators as each other below the model of our equation for the sum. We can count one, two, three, four, five one-sixth pieces. Two-thirds plus one-sixth is equal to five-sixths. We can use a fraction strip that represents one whole this red one, to know if our sum is less than or greater than one whole. We have two-thirds plus one-sixth. It's equal to five-sixths. We can see it's less than one whole. Five-sixths is less than one whole. We need to carefully line up all of the fraction strips to ensure, that means make sure, we have the correct sum. We have one-fifth plus one-tenth. These are correct that they're right next to each other, but the fraction strips we use to find the sum are not correct. They're open and apart from each other. This is the correct way. We want the edges to line up so they're equal to each other. We can see one-fifth plus one-tenth is equal to three-tenths. When the numerator and denominator are the same, the fraction is equal to one whole. We have five-fifths, that's equal to one whole. When the numerator is less than the denominator, the fraction is less than one whole. And when the numerator is greater than the denominator, the fraction is greater than one whole. Sometimes the fraction strips for our sum will have the same denominator as one of our add-ins. We have one-half plus one-fourth. It's equal to three-fourths. Three one-fourth pieces line up and fit. Sometimes the fraction strips for our sum will have a different denominator than the add-ins. We needed seven one-twelfth pieces to equal one-third plus one-fourth. If we try using one-third pieces, it's too long, and if we try using one-fourth pieces, it's too short. So seven one-twelfth pieces line up and fit, and this can happen when we write a sum in simplest form. We need to write our sum in simplest form. We divide the numerator and denominator by a common factor, a factor they have in common. And the factors for five are a one and a five, and the factors for 10 are a 1, 2, 5, and 10. They have 5 in common. 5 divided by 5 is 1. 10 divided by 5 is 2. It's equal to 1 half in simplest form. Now, if that's very confusing for you, we learned how to do this in fourth grade math 6.3. We know a fraction is in its simplest form when it is represented by the fewest amount of possible models. So 5 tenths is equal to 1 half. That's the fewest amount of models that we can use to make 5 tenths. It's one piece. One piece, that's 1 half. So you can check this description to watch that video if you need to see it to remember from fourth grade. As we progress into algebra, we'll be solving equations that use fraction bars. And we need to write our fraction bars in a horizontal position. Horizontal means going across like the horizon of the land with the sun. So writing fraction bars on a slant makes it more difficult to add, subtract, multiply, or divide fractions. So make sure you're writing your fraction bars going horizontally because you're going to need to be able to be in the habit of doing that as you get into algebra. To add fractions, the denominators must be the same. And that is why we use fraction strips with the same denominator below the model of the equation to find the sum. So all of these have the same denominator 10. We're adding 1 half plus 1 fifth. It's equal to 7 tenths. The 1 tenth fraction strips fit under our equation model because 2 and 5 are both multiples of 10. 
Here we have our one whole bar, and we're adding two six plus four twelfths right underneath the one here. And we can see it's equal to eight one twelfth pieces. It's also equal to four one sixth pieces. It's also equal to two one third pieces. And these fraction strips fit below the fraction strips for the add ends. Here's the ones for the add ends. These fit, these fit, and these fit because the denominators 3, 6, and 12 have the common factor 3, and 6 and 12 are multiples of 3. 2 6 plus 4 twelfths is equal to 8 twelfths, which is equal to 4 6, which is equal to 2 thirds. This is equal to this is equal to this. We can see their sides line up. And the factors of 3 are a 1 and a 3. The factors of a 6 are a 1, 2, 3, 6. And the factors of 12 are a 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, and 12. And we can see 3, 6, and 12 all have 3 as a common factor. If we wanted to put them into simplest form, we could use 3. We could divide by 3. And they're also multiples of 3. The multiples of 3 are 3, 6, 9, 12, 15, 18, 21, 24, and so on. And we can see that 3, 6, and 12, 3 denominator, 6 denominator, and 12 denominator, they're all multiples of 3. That's why they all line up. Mrs. Kim is making two apple pies. Each pie requires 1 fourth teaspoon of nutmeg and 1 half teaspoon of cinnamon. What is the total number of teaspoons of nutmeg and cinnamon needed for two pies? So it's asking for a total number. We're going to add these together, and she's making two pies. One pie would be one-fourth plus one-half. So two pies, we would need to add one-fourth plus one-half plus one-fourth plus one-half. For one pie, we add the one-fourth plus one-half. We can use three one-fourth fraction strips to get an equivalent denominator for one pie, because one half, if we multiply the numerator and denominator by two, we get two fourths. So we can add one fourth plus two fourths. That's equal to three fourths. That would be one pie, right here, three one fourth pieces. And she's making two pies, so we can add another three fourths for the other pie, and it's equal to six fourths. Then we can use three half fraction strips for simplest form. Six one-fourth pieces, six-fourths, is equal to three halves, which is equal to one whole and a half. It's equal to one and a half teaspoons. We added for one pie, found out what the sum was, and then added them together to, for the two pies, and then we put them into simplest form using the fewest number of fraction strips. Mrs. Kim needs one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg to make a loaf of banana bread, one half teaspoon for a batch of oatmeal cookies, and one eighth teaspoon for a custard pie. If Mrs. Kim makes one of each, how many teaspoons of nutmeg will she need in all? We need to add one fourth plus one half plus one eighth. And we need a common denominator before we can add fractions. We can use one eighth pieces. One fourth is equal to two one eighth pieces, which is two eighths. One half is equal to four one eighth pieces, which is four eighth. And we have our one eighth. That's equal to one, two, three, four, five, six, seven eighths teaspoon of nutmeg. We can multiply by a common multiple. We need the four to have a to be a denominator of eight, and we ask ourselves four times some number equals eight. That would be a two. The numerator one gets jealous. He wants to be multiplied by two. We have two eighths. For two to have an eight denominator, we ask ourselves two times some number is equal to eight, that would be two times four. The numerator gets jealous and wants to be multiplied by four also, and it is, and we get four eighths. We can add two eighths plus four eighths plus one eighth. 
They all have the same denominator, so we can just add the numerators. 2 plus 4 plus 1 is 7. So make sure as you're putting the second level of fraction strips under the add-end fraction strips that they all have the same denominator. You want them all to have the same denominator coming across. You don't want them to be mixed. That's okay for the add-end part of it, but not for the sum part that is below it. In our next video, 6.2, we're going to model subtraction of unlike denominators. And I hope I'll see you there. And I hope you're doing well. Bye.